it's like applying the knowledge that you already have to real life scenarios, which is what I think graduate school here teaches, which I don't know if anywhere else says that. So what do you think which job has a highest paying job? That's the most <laughs> I get, you know? Well, I don't really always know how much everybody makes because like if you know in the pu- in the public sector, you can always like look up someone's job because it's public information. You can do that. But you know from experience that the private sector will pay a lot more than the public sector. But there's pros and cons to both. My choices will come down to what I want to do once I graduate. It does not matter if you're in the public sector, private sector, or in the NGO sector. Research is research. And how you do it is going to be the same. But what you're going to do is going to vary depending on the, on the place. And I have not no complete experience because I'm still in school. But this is what I learned from people my question was about is it difficult to get a job hell yeah (laughs) i love that answer hell yeah of course (laughs) of course i mean you're you're you know you will not find it that's how it is I'm sure like we are going to find a job and we are so good in what we are doing. So I'm pretty sure. But people, they are so skeptical about finding a job. So well, jobs are hard, period. Right. So no matter where you are, if you're even if you're in India or even if you're here, exactly. there are and, and the reality remains that so there's a lot of people. So there's more people for one job than there ever was. So it is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy, but it is possible at the end of this day uh when i was i was worried about this like my brother-in-law told me basically forget about how many people there are competing as long as you are doing the best of your ability that's all you can ask for how somebody else is doing or how great they're doing great good for them what you have to focus on is to better yourself to the best of your ability you know i i really love the attitude that you have towards the job like everyone should have that towards the job search when they're doing that search because even not all engineering people are getting the jobs right that's the reason they have consultancies uh, do you agree with me that there are so many jobs out there for agriculture i think there are a lot of fields in which agriculture students can work yes mm-hmm. Are there currently a lot of jobs? I don't know about that. There are jobs. There are definitely jobs. It's just, it's a matter of timing and it's a matter of networking the hell out of your network. There's a business professor who says this, your net worth is your network. Irregardless of how amazing your research is, in today's day and age, you need to network. Connect with them on LinkedIn, on Twitter, via email. Keep it. Keep it in your repository because you may not need it now, but five years down on the road you're looking for a job and they work in a company that interests you oh this company is a cool company you know what i do when i see a job uh, opportunity i first look to see if there's anyone in my network who works in that company so network the hell out of your life yeah that's a that's a very good suggestion so my final question would be uh, do you suggest students to come to the u.s for any agriculture and related fields If their circumstance and their interest permit, absolutely. If it is something that they want to do, they must. Because, you know, there's a reason why uh, many people come to the U.S. to study. It has excellent education. The infrastructure is amazing. The support is great uh, from from your department, from your PIs, uh, from your teachers, and the learning. Okay, I never mentioned this before, but I will tell you this. I struggled in school here, like, you know, to make good grades because the the testing here is very different and very different in a very good way. Because until then, all I did was memorize stuff. I'm telling you today, my grades mean something because I know how to apply what I studied. My first exam, I, I remember after getting my first exam back, calling my mom and telling me they're going to send me back at the end of the semester because I'm going to fail every single class because I am struggling. I was like really distraught because it put me in my place, you know, because I was always doing so good. I took for granted that I knew stuff that I would always make a 90. I was pretty sure that maybe a bit overconfident that I would always do that. But then I went and sat in my first exam and I was like, oh my God, this stuff is hard. Like I remember like learning about DNA replication and 
you know, memorizing all of that stuff and then sitting in the class. And he asked, he wrote what the, like the question had everything about DNA replication. Yes. And like, he's already given me the answer. What does he expect me to write? He expects me to write. He's expecting me to learn what it is. And if you change one thing, how the outcome changes. So it's like very applied. And I did not know how to get that answer. I did not. So I learned something about myself was that it's important to know the know-how, but it's also important to know how that know-how is relative is relevant to a particular situation. It's like applying the knowledge that you already have to real life scenarios, which is what I think graduate school here teaches, which I don't know if anywhere else does that because I don't have experience. For all I know, uh, getting a master's in, in, in India would also, you know, challenge you with that type of questions. But since I don't, I cannot, I cannot compare. But that is something that I learned here that's unique to this, edu- this phase of my education, applying my knowledge. And that's important for your life. Even like you, I, encourage everyone who has that passion and driven towards what they wanted to do they are absolutely welcome to the u.s and explore the research opportunities that are there in here yeah so any final thoughts before we close up i will emphasize that everybody needs to find their why their purpose and because that is what is crucial when you are about to start a journey that is going to last a certain number of years so you need to now know why you're doing it find the reason why doing something different than everybody around you is important to you there is like a really nice article it's called the valley of the Sh- valley of shit i think <laughs> that's what it's called it's like this phase in your phd degree where you forget why it gave you joy and why you decided to follow this path. And it's like, usually it's like right around the time you're close to finishing and you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel and you feel like you're surrounded in despair. I didn't, when I first read that article, I wondered what the hell do they mean? I'm so happy to be here. I don't get it. I got it. No. Awesome. Like, it's really, really nice talking to you. I came in here, like I started my grad school in 2020. And with you today talking, I really learned a lot of new things. And I think by watching this video, the people uh, who wanted to come to the US will feel pumped up and know all the truths and know <laughs> all your advice why they wanted to come here and this would be really helpful for them thank you so much Amani, for uh, giving us your time of course my pleasure Shavya. thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my twisted journey but uh, i hope it will help some people to find their reasons and maybe give them a direction on how they can get started i'm hoping and i'm sure that this will help them guys see you in the next video until then Shravya signing off bye bye <laughs>